Hello everyone, Dean on the street, back for our second segment here. I'm here with uh, Ali Fleck and Kerry Fleckstein, okay? And this amazing uh, family story of adversity and love and all the things that are attached to it, uh, that uh, it's just fascinating. And I want, I want the audience to realize that I'm meeting you for the first time yes. today. I met uh, Allie at Ace Hardware, where she works, yeah. uh, um, and you know, people have to realize this is not something that my show has uh, a whole group of producers and right. uh, people that, this is not scripted out, no. uh, this is not <laughs> staged, mm -hmm. this is true uh, life, spontaneous yeah. interaction that me meeting your daughter Allie at Ace Hardware and us connecting. You and I later on complimenting me about uh, the great 60 second piece that was done right. on Allie. And what I love is that we get together and we meet like this. If it wasn't for yeah, the show, we awesome. would never have met. So this is an amazing family story and I'm so grateful and thankful that both Allie and mom, Kerry, have stepped forward. But the first thing that I left off on the first show is this whole thing and, and me, the hardest part of my show is your last names. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know Allie as Allie, Allie Fleck, Fleck, but Mom is Carrie Fleck 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 Fleckenstein. Yeah. Fleckenstein. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go over to Allie, and I'm going to say, Allie, why Allie Fleck? Well, my real name, like my full name is Alexandra Fleckenstein. It was too long. Um, because of just many things, people just learned to call me Fleck. Um, but it was never just Fleck, or it was never just Allie. It's always been Allie Fleck. Um, I've always had like I've been always been known since elementary school, maybe even before then. I've always been known, so people always just learn to call me Allie Fleck and kind of her. It's just my name. Persona. <laughs> it's yeah. how she's known in all it's kinds crazy. of circles. I think for a while it was her infamous name. Um, now Allie Fleck may be known for bigger and better things. Yeah. For her, you know, her giving back to society and the love that comes shining through all the time. So, still part of that healing. Yeah. So listen, the last show I left off uh, with the audience is mm -hmm. this transformation. Yes. You know, Carrie, you know, when with with Allie or with your family in general, mm -hmm. you know, how long ago did uh, did everything, you know, what I call a tsunami. Right. Uh, you know, how long right. how long ago did it start? And I don't know where you guys want to after you after you share, you yeah. know. Yeah what got started yeah. and to get to this point and maybe uh, instead of the whole family I don't know if you want to just focus on Allie right I think now. we'll just since focus she's, on since Allie since she initially yeah. she's the star of my show yeah okay, exactly so, uh, and she kind of represents everything else that has happened in our family too so, so I have to start with her maybe you know three years ago we moved to Florida together um, when we left um, you know life wasn't great we had gone through a couple of traumatic experiences we lost family members there was other things going on that most families really don't want to live through yeah no. um and we i had a business down there but we um i took her um in my opinion i was kind of saving her life um i knew, knew she needed to we needed to start over so um, we stayed down there for a year and a half and we came back here and she did say in the last segment how she spent part of last summer with the wrong crowd going down all the wrong avenues getting tattoos hanging out with gang members doing things that you're not supposed to do and i kind of had it i mean it had been years of this kind of heartache and strife um i never did anything bad though so no you kind of knew right like, i knew that she um, had a anything. lot of love in her heart so the journey really started fully the a year ago with her so um, ali's how old right now 16, you're 16, 16 years 16. old now yeah, yeah. i'm 17 in october okay mm -hmm. yeah so we started last summer um uh in a in a very bad place trying to understand how we were gonna how I was gonna make sure that she grew up safe and in school and making a lot of the right choices and I was beating my head against the wall you know I didn't know if I, she, she needed to go get a therapist or something like that but being the holistic <laughs> person I am I decided um, and had conversations with her consistently which I've always did with all of my children we talked about 
a life of gratefulness, a life of love, and a life of um, cons consistently accepting where you've come from. Yes. Um, so with that, I kept saying, hey, <laughs> Allie, why don't you try meditating? Why don't you talk to your, <laughs> you know, your guardian angels or spirits or whatever you want to call the universe and see if, you know, they'll... Um, you know, it's just kind of like your higher power, kind of just giving up your pain to something bigger and accepting life and just being grateful for everything that you do have. And uh, she just kind of started on that path on her own. I would get texts in the middle of the night like, hey, I did 10 minutes of meditation. <laughs> you so, know. I used to so make Kerry, you, this is something you did on your own, not with, not with uh, yeah. getting started with any outside help. Um, no, At we all. tried a therapist once or twice, um, yeah. but I've always kind of been on that spiritual journey, that gratefulness journey, the, you know, how to be happy kind of. Always had to um, be positive. Yeah, They're how to all. be positive. Um, if anything that my other kids went through or whatever, you know, I always believed in telling them what good people they were, how much there was more to life, and that love makes the world go round. <laughs> Um, and to be grateful for everything you had, you know, I've lost my parents, I've lost family members, and um, and yet I believe that's all a life lesson, and you just have to be grateful and positive. So we didn't have really any outside help. Um, I just thought, well, we're going to stick to this life together, me and her, um, because we were the ones who spent the most time together, and she slowly changed herself. I mean, she followed all of that along. She learn to meditate or she learned that the more positivity you put out into the world the more you got back and life just started to pick up for her yeah. and then she got an award in school because she was being kind to everybody and she was taking the new kids and sitting them down and saying life's okay um yeah the school i go to there's a lot of depressed kids there's a lot of mm -hmm. it's, just, it's not a normal school basically so I would, when new kids would come in, they'd be upset, I'd take them to my lunch table and talk to them and basically kind of be like a second counselor in the school. Because everyone had counselors, you had to go see them two times a week and then you have a group. And if a lot of kids have problems in that school, so I would just talk to everyone. I wasn't meant to be in that school. I just didn't want to be in my high school, so I went to this school. And I basically was the one that would run around the school being positive and happy. And some <laughs> kids would not like that. And some kids would get mad at me because mm -hmm. I was happy. And a lot of kids in that school aren't. But then I would just say, like, listen, things get better. And I pretty much taught a lot of the kids that you got to just be positive and hope for the best. Yeah, so the more yeah. that she did that, the better her life got. Yeah. You know, the more that she helped another child who came in where from a place where she used to be the better her life got and it's been a completely life transforming year mm. and that's how we're here i mean quite hey. honestly that's why we're here because she's not where she was we've just continued you know what i would like to get a better understanding uh and this would we'll have to come back on this <laughs> i mean we know here on long island mm -hmm. probably more than and for some reason out here on long island Suffolk County, Nassau County. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, obviously I just did a, uh, a couple of shows with uh, someone running for district attorney mm -hmm. of Suffolk County, uh, Ray Greeny. I mean, the two biggest issues we spoke about are the heroin epidemic mm -hmm. that's prevalent here on Long yep. Island and and the gangs. Uh, it's yeah. just uh, it's, it's just awful. It's crazy. So maybe when we maybe when we come back. Yeah. Uh, but uh, before we do sign off. I know that you've uh, your business, Carrie, has uh, developed uh, where yeah. you where you welcome people to uh, reach out to you. Uh, yeah. If you want to share with the audience how they could get in touch with you. Well, I own a healing center called Steeped in Health, which is on 25A in St. James, and um, I do all of this work there. I work privately with people. I hold classes there. It is a nutrition store so that it kind of takes care of mind, body, and soul wellness. Um, I have talked to parents in different situations, parents who may be struggling with a child who either has a substance abuse problem, has friends who have a substance abuse problem, or who have gone some through some kind of grief. I mean, you know, we don't have to lose somebody necessarily. Maybe we lose a life we thought we'd have. I mean, that kind of 
um, healing center. Well, so. well, listen, we're gonna we're gonna come back shortly, and I want to thank you guys again sure, for our for second episode. Yeah. That uh, once again, it's terrific when there's full transparency. We keep it real. We keep it fun. And in a relaxed conversation, be able to make, tell your story, your experiences, and I hope more people come forward. So this has been Dean on the Street, here with uh, Kerry and with Allie. We'll see you real soon. Bye-bye now.